Well, greetings again. This is Dr. Wyatt with the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm still on putting teeth back in the mouth that were taken out wrongly. Uh, at least that's all I could come to believe after seeing this patient. It was transferred to me from Oklahoma, and they had this upper bicuspid removed and they didn't take it out on the bottom. The bottom they were crowded as all get out and they left those in there and they, uh, the lady looked pretty bad with as this. And so we opened up the space and we had to come in here and have uh, implants or bridges put in uh, where the space was so you can restore the mouth Orthodontically, you help the people and work with a restorative dentist. Just have one that uh, you work with a lot and he knows what you're doing. I'll show you dozens of cases we've had teeth missing back and they have partials and uh, big gaps in there. I've got a whole string of those people and uh, that we've worked on like that. And that's the same thing. And so with, let's go through these cases fast as we can, and I'll kind of skip over the regular dental part in here, and we'll just try to show you the part. And this young lady came in from Oklahoma, and she was going to mortuary school here in Dallas, and uh, some way or another lady, the dentist, I, and so, of course, I've got Oklahoma uh, sent, the, sent this lady in from my office to see about what they could do with it. And so this is what what we did. And this has got a bicuspid there. I know there's a lot of things in it, just regular dentistry I'm not going to uh, mention. But we went in and took the, we, in, in, we had to open the bite up, you see. So we got this intruding wire. And this is a, one of the most effective ways of open you that I've ever come on. Uh, you come in with a wire and you make a bend like this and then this part back here we run it down and then you put this in these teeth here you run it over there and now you got to raise this up. But you can pull that tooth forward and it will bring the roots forward. Or if you want to intrude the anterior teeth, you run this wire way down and raise it up and hook it there. And it'll, you can pull these teeth down, it'll raise this tooth up just a little bit. The chewing will hold it in place. And now that we've got space here, see, we're, we're prone to replace the tooth back here so they can put a bridge or something between these two teeth. It may have been this one they took out. Uh, that doesn't matter. So we're going to join it to a heavier tooth here. So we put it here and we're expanding this this spring in here is pushing this. This wire goes out and turns down. It won't come out unless you straighten it up and slide it out. And then we're pushing on this to bring this out. Now when you start expanding the teeth, if you're going to bring them forward You've got to run interference for them. And you can't move the teeth. If you just move them up against a tight bone structure here, the soft tissue where the bone develops can't form properly. You'll tend to push them through the bone. So don't you don't want that. You run interference. You leave a gap between the tissue and your, and your lip bumper, whatever it is. And we use two tines. I've got a wire lip bumper at the end here. I'll show you that. In this case, it's been up here. It's got a few thousand views on it already. Now let's go. We're, we're bringing these teeth forward. Now I don't want to run the roots of these teeth through the bone structure if the top lip isn't as bad as the lower lip. Now the lower lip, sometimes it'll you start expanding there, you better get your lip bumper in there and run interference for them. So anyway, we're opening this for that word and we're 
intruding. We're bringing these teeth down. It's picking these teeth up, and it's kind of kick that. And they have to chew on this hard, and they close that. She leaves us alone. That gets us bring these teeth in a forward direction. Now we're pushing over like this, and these are moving out, and we've got them tied together with an elect uh, elastic chain so that the gap is going to. It must be broken here, but anyway, we're opening a gap in this part right here. We decided to put the uh, tooth that you put in, put it on the molar, and put a cantilever bridge if necessary. Now, when we got these teeth out of the way, the bottom further, then we expanded this down on the bottom and lined those teeth up, and we had to open it up. Now, this is the wire lip bumper. If you learn how to do these, you can make them in just a few minutes. And I'm on a plane, put just a sheet up here, take it. We make them out of about 036 or 040 wire, and you take a long piece of the wire, but you catch it in the middle here with it, and you bend this leg up and up like this. Then you get up here and you, you catch the wire over here, bend it again down here, catch it here, bend it up again, and if you want another one, and we stop here and come back, put it up where you go and then the field. So you just make it like this. And if you come all the way up, and you go back with it like that. And you, you can take this part where you've got those going up, you can angle them like this at whatever angle, and you can expand this thing, just take it out if you, and you keep it with pressure on the lip so it'll bring the lip out of the way and you'll have a gap between the lip and the tissue where you're moving the tooth in. Let's go back, we we'll see. You see this doesn't touch the tissue, but it keeps the lip off of the tissue, and you keep expanding this by you can stretch these things out and run this out however you want to, and the lip fits in above this, and you can adjust these things in a fashion like that, depending on how the tissue is right there, and it'll keep it and it doesn't, it'll make a little track in the lip, but that's all, and they're pretty comfortable to wear, and you can bring this down and put it in the headgear tubes, back at the back. And then you keep that space while you're bringing all of these teeth in a forward direction. So here we're going. Now here we came in and put an up bend arch wire in here where you can push on this and that'll make the root go along with the rest of the teeth. And that's another trick. You can have a, a, a deal, let me show you that. Like if you got a tooth coming like this, a bicuspid say, and you got a molar back in here, and you want to open a space in here. If you bend, oh, and you've got a tube here, you're going in, and this has got to fit down in here, you go like this, come over to this one, come up here. You make that where you have to squeeze it in there, then this bottom goes down, and when it goes down, it pushes this down, and this down. So when you do that, that pushes the root out as the tooth spreads. And you can spread out teeth by putting this type of deal in there. You run it, you make it too small when you come in here and you, you bend it down, it comes like that, and it comes up here, and this leg will go down when you bend that down like that. This leg will come, I'm sorry, it will go up and that puts pressure on this to bring that root forward 
as you push the tooth this way, this tooth goes this way. And this is a way you can open space or you can close space with these. As you pull them together, if you tie this where you got to tie it back, then this thing will swell up like this, and then the thing will go back that way and it pulls the root. And you, so you can open and close space with this type of a uh, of an arch wire, building it the way you put it in there. That's the way to do that. Now, I'm going to go on to the next. Tube. This headgear, you see, comes back. Drop it down, put it in the headgear tube. You make this, you can build one of them, make one of those lip bumpers in just a few minutes once you learn how to bend them and you take a wire if it's in there, you can just bend those things up and down like that. And now you can shape them whatever you want you want. You go back on the leg, mark it, bend it down and go in the head your, your tube and they're an excellent way to do lip bumpers. Now we also put a reverse headgear in here and we put these elastics back and we're pulling these forward, pushing back on the lower jaw in here. So you can do the material we have today, you can do almost anything you can think about with the teeth. You can, there, there's some, a few things you can't do. You can't put two teeth in the same spot at the same time. You can't do that. But you can do anything under the sun as far as moving the teeth. If you just learn how to use these things we have, and I've tried to come up on the best, easiest, most efficient way that you can do it. And I've got it in videos in there. And I tell you, if you find a better way to do it, let me know about it and I'll study it. And if it's true, I will change to that to do it. So the things we're putting out are as far as I can tell, they're true. And they'll be true 50 years from now. That's, that's what you're doing in here. So let's go. So this has a hickam chin cup, and it's pulling this out, but it's pushing back on the jaw. And if this person has a weak jaw joint back here or the problem with a TMJ, they may not be able to wear it, especially at night when they relax. Sometimes you can wear it in the daytime where they keep, they hold the jaw out, or you have to make a ramp deal to bring that up underneath there to hold the jaw from going back against the condyle. All right, there's this way that goes. And you can build one of these in a matter, once you learn how to do it, you can make one of those in a minute, or two minutes, something like that, and put them in. All right, so we pull this, we're pulling over this, over, turning this tooth around like that. Now what you can do is hook an elastic, go around this tooth. You may have to put a little acrylic here and catch hold of this and you'll pull this, you'll rotate this tooth and this to make. You pull it over here unless you got it real tight up against it. The tooth will tend to rotate in this direction this one over here stay pretty straight, but you can turn that like you're rotating teeth. And so the bottom teeth now, we've got them straightened out, and this lined up. Now this lady worked in a morgue over in Dallas, and the people from the orthodontic school there in Dallas came over to this morgue. There was somebody there they knew. And the, she told me they paid more attention to me than they did the, the person uh, that was, had, was they had passed away. And uh, she told me all about that. And that was kind of interesting. They, they told her, said, why did you come to the 
Baylor Dental, and we'd have done the same thing for you. But uh, that wasn't the way they actually worked. All right, so we got that space open, and we made a retainer, and we put a pad in here, and she wore that, and kept those teeth out there until she could get a bridge or something put in the put in the space. And now you, this is opening space, and this needs to be taught that people can open this and learn how to do it. And and if you do that, you can open and close anybody you want to. And we have other ways of dealing with it too. So thank you for watching, and I hope you pick up what we're doing here on this. And that way we restored this woman's mouth and her facial structure looked much better. And if somebody had just screwed up, uh, taken teeth on her and got her too far uh, to sunk in there. And that's the way it started out like that. And we widened it, widened it out and shoved it forward like that. You see the distance? You can shape the arch to this. You can put the big daddy over in there and shape that arch any way you want to. Actually, we use the lip bumper to kind of shape out the arch too. And now that's the shape and it's out and there's space in there, they fill it in. And these teeth were crooked, and we lined them up. And there, this situation where we started, and we opened that gap, and you see the bone move in here. I don't know whether we had some root resorption, but there is some root resorption on those two teeth, but I never have lost a tooth from root resorption. And I've been doing this stuff for nearly 60 years, or somebody, maybe it is 60, 60 years. And we opened it up and filled it in. Now, I don't know whether this lady had had some uh, surgery done on the jaw, and it looks like they had advanced or got so whatever it was, it was a screwed up mess, and we went in and fixed it with that. And the condom worked like that, and we got it fixed out here. The condom stayed in a good position. And so here she is now, like that. And now the facial structure looks good. I mean, it's lined up real good. Now, this stuff, changes people's lives. It's not just a pretty smile, but you fix it where the teeth are something that are really nice to see and people smile and they look at people different and they feel more confident. And if they're speaking or in public speaking or out in front of people and they don't mind or showing their teeth, it really changes the way that person is. And that is a good thing in orthodontics. You don't just make a pretty smile here. You, you do that, but look at the facial structure. You don't want the chin way down here. You want to keep it level, and you go in and work on it, and you change that person. Orthodontics has been the most gratifying thing I could have done in my life. I got more of feeling of good feeling working on somebody. Some people that came in there, I would have paid them to let me straighten their teeth up just to uh, show them that you could do something. And we got some implant. I mean, people call in and if somebody's doing orthodontics and it really they're unhappy with it. But I've never had anybody that, I've, I, I, it hurts some, it's uncomfortable to do a lot of it, but you think of the benefit that you can do for people, and that has been a gratifying thing to me. 
I thank you for watching, and I'm going to sign out now, and we'll say goodbye.